we need to have a talk about pronouns. There's one thing when Westerners come to this part of the world, and when I say this part of the world, I mean Southeast Asia. So if they're learning Thai, Lao, Indonesian, Malay, there's one thing that sticks out like a sore thumb. When they're learning the local languages, some people might even develop quite a degree of fluency in the language, but there's an obstacle, there's like glass ceiling where they're just never going to develop real natural sounding prosody in the ears of the native speakers. Now, I'm not talking about an accent, an accent is another thing, but I'm talking about just the general rhythm. This is prosody, the general selection of words, the way that the language flows in the ears of the native speakers of that language. And if you don't get that natural prosody, well, you're going to miss out on opportunities then that not sounding like a foreigner is going to open up to you. Now, that thing is this over-dependence on just having to use pronouns. I'll give you an example. This was really made apparent to me this week. I was reviewing some online learning apps. Now, it seems that a lot of these apps are developed by tech people, business people who actually probably don't really have any knowledge of the languages that they're building the apps for. It seems they just want to use these APIs that can get translations of this to that and they then build activities where supposing you get this sentence, please match each word in this sentence to the sentence in the target language. And the reality is that you cannot do that. So even a simple thing like I love you seems pretty simple in English. But if you were going to say that in Thai, and many people would say, oh, how do you say I love you in Thai? Somebody might translate it directly as Chan Rak Kun. But the reality is not a single native Thai speaker would ever say that. Supposing they were just Thais and they're living together and I said, I love you like that. Now that'd sound pretty normal in English, but in Thai, you just say, Lak na. Now the word lak is love. And then this particle na at the end, it actually embodies all of this meaning. It gives some reciprocity. It means that I assume that this feeling that I'm saying is understood and probably felt by you back to me. All of this is embodied in this na particle at the end. There's no need to say I or you because it's just embodied in that. And this is where we're starting to scratch the surface on this beautiful depth in all of these languages and you start to realize why you just don't need to use pronouns. Okay, maybe I'm going too far there. It's not that you don't need to use pronouns, but the usage of pronouns is very different. There are a lot of cases where in English you might use a pronoun, but in Thai or Indonesian you just would not use a pronoun. If you do use pronouns for either I, you, he, she, or you're talking about a third person, then we get to another level and that's a whole other science. The general rule for the pronoun is that you would use the word that would be anticipated that the other person would use for you or the person you're talking about. So then it comes to understanding power levels, kinship terms, and all of these other things, which I'll probably do another clip on in the future. But today we're focusing on the cases where you just do not need to use pronouns. And so I'm going to show you some examples and some ways that you can start to break this addiction to need to use pronouns, especially the pronouns I and you when you're speaking in languages from this part of the world. So here's a very simple one and it really sticks out like a sore thumb when foreigners learn Indonesian. One of the first sentences that they learn is, what's your name? And so they would probably learn the sentence, siapa nama mu? So siapa means who, nama, name, mu. And so nama mu becomes one word, your name. In Indonesian, the thing comes before the owner. So nama, name, mu, nama mu, your name. The full word mu would be kamu, nama kamu. So mu gets contracted and attached nama mu. Now that's one pronoun for you. But the reality is in Indonesia, on the street, in Jakarta at least, if you wanted to say, what's your name? Nobody would say, siapa nama mu. This is the foreigner version of the language because maybe Indonesians know that English speakers have this dependency to need to use I and you. Indonesians would say, namanya siapa? Now namanya, people may think nya comes from dia, his name, but namanya actually means the name the name, namanya siapa, which is the colloquial, or at least just the standard street way of saying, what's your name? Now in English, we have the word your, that doesn't exist in Indonesian. Namanya siapa, and we could say the same thing in Thai, what's your name? Chua Now you could say, kun chua arai, 
what's your name? But nobody would ever say that. You don't need to say the word Khun, which is interpreted in this sense as you. I have a whole other clip out there to show you that actually there's no word for you in Thai. The word Khun literally means respected one from the word Gunna in Sanskrit. But that's another story. What's your name? Chirai. Now you can start to see the problem with these apps. These apps are saying, what's your name? And then people are trying to match word for word what they are. And even worse, these apps, because they're gamified and they want to have a system that's going to work across all of these different languages, people will get marked down if they don't use these unnatural forms of the language. And even if you have native speakers developing the sentences, they're probably given a mandate by the owners of these companies of the types of sentences that they have to create in a way that they will match the English counterparts. So you're gamifying the language in a way that is going to reinforce this unnatural prosody and just terms that you're not going to use in the language with these learners of the language. So they're going to come out feeling great that they're actually progressing in the game of learning the language. But when they get out on the street, they're not going to understand anything. Here's some other examples. So in Indonesian, where are you going? Where are you going? That's easy enough in English. Where are you going? So you might get in one of these apps, Kamu mau pergi ke mana? Kamu, you, mau, want, pergi, go, ke, to, mana? Kamu mau pergi ke mana? The reality is that nobody would ever say that. They'd just say, Mokomana, want to where? Mokomana, where are you going? The whole you in this is just inferred within that sentence. In Thai, it's exactly the same. Where are you going? Painai. Painai. You don't have to say, where are you going? There's no R, there's no you. It's just, Painai go where? And it's just understood within the context of that sentence that there is a you in there. You do not need this you put in there. However, you hear so many foreigners when they come in to learn Thai and they will need to put these in there. And even if you tell them it's okay, drop it. And they think, oh, that's okay. That's okay. If people understand it when I put it in, I'll still keep it in there. The only reason they'd be understanding it is maybe they're being nice and trying to accommodate your very foreign sounding language, but it's not natural within the language. And in fact, this is why in my Cracking Thai Fundamentals program, I have a whole section on thinking in meanings and these meaning building blocks. So I came up with these 11 meaning building blocks. Kun long pai ma hai lap song ao. These ones I just use as a, just an entry point for people coming in because these will start to help people decouple themselves from needing to rely on pronouns. Now, for example, the word pai. By people will say means go, ma means to come, but it means so much more than this. These are actually vector words. So I'll just give you one example on how these work. I just mentioned, so where are you going? Bai nai, where are you going? So bai nai, bai, in this sense, bai literally means to go. So bai nai. So in this sense, you don't need the word you in there, but have a look at this. The word to call somebody, to, from the word torasa. By the way, Tora Dura is the same root as Tele, which means far or distant. Sap from the word Shapta, meaning word. So telephone, Tora Sap, distant words, distant language. So it's almost a similar word that we have in English. English takes it from the Greek, Thai takes it from the Sanskrit. But anyway, Tor, Tor is the abbreviated word from Tora Sap to phone. Tor Bai. Now this Bai here, gives it direction going away from me. So it's almost like cases within, say, Slavic languages or Latin, Greek languages that have cases giving direction. So to by means I'm going to call out. If I say to ma, it means the call is coming in. So if I say diao to bai na, diao to bai. Now this word diao in this sense means like in a minute or later on. So to bai. So if I'm talking to somebody and I say diao to bai, call bai means that I'm going to call out. There's no ambiguity at all with this meaning. Who's doing the calling? and who's going to be receiving. Now the context too. So if I'm talking to this person, I've just asked them for a number, and then I say, it's pretty obvious that I'm going to call you. I will call you. And nobody would have any ambiguity about who's doing the calling, who's going to be called. Now, if I said to that same person, literally means to come, but it's basically this vector word coming towards me. And so let's break it down. Tomana, to call ma toward me. So obviously, I'm telling the person that I'm speaking to to 
phone towards me. They're the ones going to be doing the calling to me. I don't have to say, you call me, okay? I don't need to say that at all. All I have to say is Toma, and the whole meaning of them calling me is embodied into that two word sentence. Putting the na particle at the end, Toma na, basically is a check. I'm saying, you call me, okay? And I'm assuming that they have the same understanding that I have. And then I'm wanting to get a response from them confirming that what I anticipate they understand is actually understood. So in Thai, they might say cup or ka if it's a lady, acknowledging that they are going to call. Now you could go through this whole dialogue without anybody needing to use a single pronoun. This is the beauty of these languages. If you go through Cracking Thai Fundamentals, you actually see and there's a whole, whole section and actually in my online resources where you can actually start to do exercises to train your brain subconsciously to think in these meanings and you'll stop this dependence on having to use pronouns in all the sentences that you use. So it's not a really long clip today, but it's a super important lesson. No matter what you use in English, and English pronouns are a big thing lately, when you come to Asia and especially Southeast Asia, the whole art of using pronouns or when you don't use pronouns is something that needs to be focused on. And in order to do that, you need to start to feel the language in a way that's not translated word for word as though you might do across maybe some romance languages when you're learning a foreign language. You just can't do it. So you need to start to build meanings in a different way and embed those meaning structures within you in a way where they just trigger subconsciously. This is why we put Minecraft together. So if you want to learn more about that, just jump into the Discord server, scan the QR code up top and talk about it. The Minecraft program is actually all about that. How to actually reprogram your mind with a new operating system that is generic of any mother tongue that you have and you can start to put these principles both in sounds, in particles, in meaning structures across any language and start to build native-like prosody no matter what the language is that you're learning. I'm Stuart J. Raj and I'll see you on the other side.